हेलो दिस इज डॉक्टर फॉरम एम जोशी फ्रॉम जी एच पटेल कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी वल्लभ विद्यानगर एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टेक द टॉपिक ऑफ आर्किटेक्चरल एकोस्टिक्स विच इज़ द पार्ट ऑफ द फर्स्ट यूनिट इन द ओल्डर सिलेबस ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड इन द न्यूअर सिलेबस इट इज़ द पार्ट ऑफ द थर्ड यूनिट ऑफ द न्यूअर सिलेबस ऑफ फिजिक्स Uh, actually, in the third unit, there are two parts. First is uh, architectural acoustics. Second is ultrasonics. Uh, you can see, as you can see here in the PPT, it is um, a big theater, big hall with a large number of audience. On the three sides of the hall, the audience is placed, and in between that, uh, there is uh, amongst them uh, there are seats which has uh, stairs in there. so uh, what will be the effect of sound when it is emitted from the source so that's what uh, important from the acoustics point of view acoustics is a science of sound study of sound related uh, say sound and sound related properties of the um, uh, the building so sound is an energy which is generated by a source transmitted through a medium and received by a receiver when uh, one person is speaking in a room say in your classroom the teacher is speaking then it is transmitted by the teacher it is teledopper banave na to do not okay it is uh, received by uh, your ear so the teacher is the source of sound at that time it is transmitted through a medium a medium which is always necessary for the sound to propagate sound cannot propagate in the vacuum so it is received by uh, when it is received by you or you can say you you are hearing it you are listening it you are sensing it then it is you are the receiver of that sound so, so whenever sound propagates it propagates in three parts first is transmission second is the propagation and third it is the receiving now it how it propagates in a medium when we say that it is it is essential to have a medium for the propagation of sound then how it propagates it propagates through a medium through continuous condensations and rare fractions and this condensation and rare fraction they are uh, the part of the particles in the medium right so uh, the particles of the condens particles of the medium uh, we will go to the table top uh the particle of a medium when they uh, receive a sound say this is the sound source and when they receive the sound waves one can say that the sound source will emit the light from uh in all the all the end directions when they emit all the in the three dimensions in all directions sound source is emitting the sound waves sorry and when this wave they touch they incident on the first layer of the particles in a medium they will be this particles will start vibrating now in which direction they will vibrate as you know sound waves are longitudinal waves that means if sound direction is this then the particle vibration direction will be the same right that means if i am considering this particle then it will vibrate on around its um, equilibrium position in both the two directions by this way it will transfer the energy to the second layer of particles by this way when sound propagates in order to transfer the energy this layers they will come nearer to each other and the adjacent set of layers they will move away from each other the particle is vibrating around one point no doubt but due to the successive uh, say uh, this uh, successive repetitions of this process being nearer nearer to each other and being going away from each other sound propagates in a medium this region this particular region is known as condensed region and this particular region is known as rarefied region or rare fraction so in a way sound propagates through uh, successive condensations and rare fractions through the medium 
it always requires an elastic medium to propagate velocity of sound in a medium is v is equal to f lambda right we can see uh, some more things on the ppt okay so we are moving again to the ppt you can see here that in uh, in a how sound propagates in a medium you can see you can concentrate here on the red dot you can see that particular particle is moving with a particular with a particular velocity which is the sound propagation velocity it is actually compression and refraction of the different spring turns you can see here in the figure that uh, the red dot in the upper figure it is actually it is the animation made by dan russell that uh, the particle is moving on its equilibrium position of course but the sound wave is propagating through this type of particle propagation and particles are moving in the direction of the sound wave so it is similar to the compression refraction in the spring and you can see that in the compressed region the air pressure is high in the red refracted region the air pressure is low right so you can uh, again watch that the distance between two continuous condensed region they make a wavelength and this wavelength actually can be measured by measuring the distance between two condensed regions right uh, you can see here the graph and the acoustical longitudinal wave in this particular animation developed by uh, isvr the similar way just for example this is a transverse wave how particles are moving if you concentrate on the red dots red particles here they are moving perpendicular to the wave propagation it they are this oscillations are just similar to the oscillations in a string right when we just try the string on one side they are oscillating in this manner now uh, once we understand the propagation of sound in the room we can say that the classification of sound can be done by infrasonic audible and ultrasonic based upon the frequency with which they are emitted the infrasonic sound have less than 20 hertz frequency the audible sound they reside in between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz audible means that is the range in which the human ear can sense the sound right the human ear has a limited capacity actually starting from 0 hertz to uh, maximum uh, n hertz frequency human ear has a limited capacity to hear and that is the audible sound the ultrasonic sound has the frequency greater than 20 kilohertz now in audible sound we can classify further with musical sound and noise musical sound have typical characteristics of having a particular constant wave form we are moving again to the table top the musical sound that can be produced through any of the instrument or any of the person it has a particular wave form and that wave form can be defined as uh, say amplitude on amplitude versus time graph it has a particular sinusoidal form a particular sinusoidal form which is repeated throughout it has the similar amplitude similar wavelength similar uniform waveform and this is why this is called musical sound ideally musical sound is the sound which creates a pleasing effect to the ear on another side the noise the sound which produces the uh, it is of course audible sound but the sound which produces say jarring effect on the ear or say unpleasant effect on the ear haphazardly changing waveform haphazardly changing wavelength haphazardly changing amplitude so this type of noise it is uh, this type of uh, sound is called noise in the uh, in the acoustical language right uh, generally when we design the architectural acoustics 
we will move uh, we will just deal with this type of musical sound of course we are dealing with noise but we are dealing with noise in a way to remove it we should just uh, try to enhance the sound quality by dealing with the musical sound right so musical sound has three major characteristics as we can move to the uh, ppt pitch timber and loudness this uh, pitch timber and loudness they are three major characteristics of any of the musical sound any of the sound that is spoken by the teacher that may be uh, uh, say spoken by your mother or your uh, dad or it may you may he hear it in the picture song in the movie song right so pitch is a uh, it is the frequency dependent quantity one can see here that higher the pitch higher the frequency or vice versa higher the frequency higher the pitch it distinguishes between the steel and grave sound how shrill and grave sounds can be distinguished when you hear your uh, hear that some uh, uh, female voice is singing some song and you can say that shreya goshal is singing some song for example and the same song if it is sung by udit narayan are you be able to understand are you be able to distinguish between the song yes because female voices are shrill small child it uh, he or she also speaks with very shrill voice but male voices are graver voices so higher pitch voices are shrill voices while lower pitch voices they are graver voices right so uh, pitch is particularly 100% physiological quantity it depends it varies from person to person who is producing that particular sound but the uh, the quantity on which pitch depends that is the frequency and that is actually the physical quantity physical quantity means it can be measured with physical instruments so pitch is a physiological quantity while frequency it is a physical quantity now second one is a uh, timber timber is the ability of a person to distinguish between the uh, different person sound having the same frequency or the same pitch right when you are uh, uh, studying in the class if somebody ask you about something or somebody calls you then will you be able to recognize that particular sound that yes this is a person who is speaking who is this is a particular french chintan or here is a particular friend abhishek will you be able to recognize apart from that if you are out of your house and if someone calls you you can you you will instantly recognize that yes mama is calling or in a way your sister is calling you are able to distinguish between two simple higher pitch sounds in that case right so that means that ability to distinguish between person Uh, a person's particular unique quality of sound that is called timber it depends upon the uh, quality of sound it differentiates the notes of the same frequency emitted from the different sources another example for timber it is it is the simplest example that uh, when one song is sung by say older singer kishor kumar and if the same song is sung by the newer singer then you will be instantly recognizing that no this one this song was sung by kishor kumar but right now it is sung by some new singer right so that's the thing having the same frequency and emitted from similar kind of source but still you are able to recognize you are able to differentiate the two sounds right that is called the timber again timber is a physiological quantity not a physical quantity but it depends upon the quality of sound which can be a uh, which is a physical quantity right timber can vary from person to person the third uh, characteristic is loudness loudness signifies how far and up to what extent the sound is audible again it is a particularly a physiological quantity and not a physical quantity but loudness depends upon intensity which is again a physical quantity so all the characteristics of the musical sound they are pitch timbre and loudness and they are physiological quantity varies from person to person but the quantities on which they depend it is a physical quantity now intensity 
I said that loudness depends upon the intensity. So, intensity is what? It is the rate of flow of sound energy per unit area per unit time. You may have uh, learnt in your past that a, uh, I is proportional to A square. Yeah, it's a well known equation. Now, L is proportional to log I that says that L is equal to K log I, right? This law is known as weber fehner law and loudness level actually the real loudness or say absolute loudness cannot be measured. One has to measure the loudness level with respect to any certain level, right? When I am saying that this voice is louder. This voice is uh, less louder, but with respect to what less louder? With respect to what it is louder voice. So, one has to define one level, one sound level, say intensity level to have a particular level of loudness. The relative loudness is always calculated. The absolute loudness cannot be found. So, loudness level has a particular formula I L or say delta L is equal to 10 log I upon I 0. Uh, it is measured in decibel. DB. DB actually bell is the unit of loudness. But uh, since bell was very, very large unit, it was uh, taken in decibel. 1 decibel equal to 1 tenth of the bell. Right, so we will move to the tabletop just to understand how loudness level equation can be defined. S say, uh, when I say that L is proportional to uh, log of I, I say that it is a weber fehner law. When I put one constant, proportionality constant, L is equal to K log I, right? Now, I am defining one level I, say I0, which is the minimum audibility level that is 10 raise to minus 12 volt per meter square. According to the frequency, F is equal to, this is actually equivalent to the minimum audibility frequency that is F is equal to 20 hertz. And I can be found from Q upon at where q is the energy per unit area q is the sound energy per unit area per unit time so i can also be found from another equation say what we have just now discussed